Uh, it's a great uh, technical uh, fault actually. It's raining outside, so there's issues with the server as well. Uh, thanks. If you're there, yes, we'll continue the show even you are there at least. Yeah. Fine. And uh, we'll apologize for delay now. Definitely like, leave yeah. it to Dr. Vasuki. Basically, it will be one to one, but definitely you are our regular. So we'll continue the session, okay? You ask yeah. your questions, doctor is there, doctor, yeah. you start with the subject yeah. and we'll connect others uh, later. Thank yeah. you. So, hello Marlene, it's nice to see you back. So, yeah, so like last week, uh, you know, we talked about detox, uh, you know, uh, food and etc. So that's when I told like, you know, like the principles of Ayurvedic dietics or pharmacology, when it comes to consumption or utilization of food, it's pharmacological actions are determined by the taste with it, you know, by its predominant taste. And then last year, I told like, I mean, last week I told like, you know, uh, food which are as, uh, you know, uh, pungent as well as bitter in taste, they have a great uh, boosting effect on the metabolism because of which, you know, as well as it helps up in opening up the channels of circulation. So there is free flowing of nutritious substances and, uh, you know, an unrestricted elimination of our waste, biological wastes. So this is, you know, how exactly when you boost up the metabolism, any kind of toxins get uh you know what we call as uh, detoxified uh and you know it it is rendered harmless by the body and its excretion is you know uh, rendered very easily so now the same principle you know uh, applies even when we consume beverages also so um basically any beverage especially when it is hot uh by the virtue of its heat itself it becomes detoxifying in nature so it's not necessarily just tea or coffee even just consumption of hot water you know uh, as much as we can tolerate the heat of the water that itself becomes you know detoxifying in nature in fact in many cases of uh, fever in ayurveda they say the first line of treatment is by making the patient consume hot water because this boosts up you know uh, the metabolism and whatever undigested or intermetabolites what is technically called as ama in the body gets completely digested or burnt up and then it gets detoxified and you know it helps the body to recover from the state of fever so the same concept applies you know even for detoxification thereby you know which helps in anti-aging and many other beneficial products which you want in fact ayurveda says that the strength of immunity is directly linked with the strength of our digestive capacity or agni or metabolism so with the same concept you know so whenever you use the hot water per se or by boiling the water with any herbs you know if you're an indian you know there are various spices in the masala box which people can use which tend to be uh, pungent in taste or which are heating in nature so when you put them in the hot water and then boil them either you bring the water to boil or sometimes if you want to make it really potent you can wait till the water level is reduced to the half of the initial quantity of the water you have taken hello again though and or if you want to make it even more potent you can reduce it to one fourth also so this particular concussion which you have created by boiling the herb or a spice uh, to half or just bring it to boil or even to one quarter that itself becomes a great detoxifying, uh, you know, drink or beverage by which you can detox yourself. So now this is like if you want to use, a, if you want to create your own beverage, you know, so it doesn't necessarily has to be Indian herbs by per se. It can be any herb which is, you know, native to your place. Like, for example, I spent my younger days when in Japan. So another pungent a uh, spice or herb which is used there is wasabi you know which people use nowadays in sushis a lot so that also as long as it's not too much that you doesn't create irritation in the intestine and stomach but in the right dose of consumption of wasabi paste with generous amount of warm to hot water itself can act as a great detox or you can consume it with light amount of food or something you know that acts detox so it's kind of like crazy but you can use any herb which is you know native and natural to your place and as long as it is either pungent in taste or if it is bitter in taste or if it is heating in nature then it naturally you know helps contributes to uh, your detoxification 
but there is one exception to this that is when as much as salt and sour taste even though it can be heating in nature and you see from ayurvedic perspective in their excess quantity there or like even in moderate to severe quantity itself they can be harmful to our body tissues so that's the reason why last year is it better hotter yes it is true hotter the water it is better last week when i raised this question about what exactly things come to their mind when we talk about the old detox someone had told about lemon water and then i had uh, discouraged them or i have told that it's not really real the first you know thing of choice when you see from an ayurvedic perspective because as much as when you see from an ayurvedic perspective lemon water even though it is heating in nature it does enhance metabolism as well as it's really efficient in burning down our ama we have to be mindful of in which uh, region or, or geography or climate we use it so from that perspective in a tropical or subtropical climate lemon water would be discouraged when you have got other more effective and more safer herbs whose judicious or generous amount you can consume with, with to a great extent without you know get developing any kinds of kind of untowards effect to the body but however that cannot be said about any sour substances except probably the exception is indian gooseberry or amla but however for people who are living in the temperate regions you know like the uk the us and um, good amount great amount of european countries where it's really chilling and cold up to some extent they can use lemon water judiciously more than how indians and other tropical countries like uh, you know latin america central america thailand some parts of mediterranean all these you know places which are tropical and subtropical they will have to be really cautious while, while consuming lemon or any other kind of sour tasting herb or vegetable by making its concoction so this is the basic principles of how to create any beverage based on what is you know available organically raw at your place that is when you use it in like when you make a concussion of it using uh you know um hot water it naturally is you know really good on this one uh first thing in the morning what are your thoughts about this yeah uh, the thing is like i said you know you have to be re really careful about whether you personally can tolerate it based on your prakriti and the second thing is like i said just now you know you need to see whether in which region you are because i wouldn't necessarily you know uh, recommend lemon water or apple cider for anyone in south india because we are nearer to the tropics and the equator but i as or for people who are in northern india or who live in colder places they can kind of drink lemon water and apple cider with it so because they can drink these detox drinks without undergoing you know without uh, you know like they've got a higher margin of safety before they start really developing negative effects of you know consuming sour substances so this is my take on you know apple cider and it it also depends on your particular uh, you know in that particular given point of you know whether if you have got any kind of vikruti related to the pitta doshas because these are sour uh, you know are sour and alkaline tasting food they have a tendency to provoke uh, pitta sensitively so one has to be careful so come back to the main so be based on these herbs and you know substances which are uh, available locally you can create detox beverage of your own choice and your own uh, you know liking and so this is how you can use any herb or spice to detox and the most famous one which we would recommend in ayurveda is to use uh, black pepper or ginger uh, fenugreek cumin cardamom um uh, clove these things you know which are and it is you know famously used in various households or even sometimes even in the, you know south india especially when there some guest in the you know some guest comes rather than giving uh, water you would uh, you know give them these flavored water waters you know because it's both refreshing as well as it's a great detox for the body
Uh, so you do you do oil pulling first or drink the lemon water or anything else first? I mean, okay, um, oil pulling and lemon water. Uh, I think you probably do the oil pulling first and then drink the lemon water because you know the oil is a little bit heavy in nature. So that after you consume oil pulling, so if in case you you know swallow something uncoveredly or uh, you know unknowingly, then at least the lemon water will help you to digest it. So this is that. So coming to the main topic, you know, so, so this is how you detox yourself using the beverages. And the second thing commonly substance, which I feel you can easily, which is a beverage, but you can easily repurpose to, you know, use it as a detoxifying drink and which I use it personally is actually black coffee. Because when you see from an Arabic perspective, black coffee or coffee is actually bitter in taste as well as it is heating in nature or what we technically call it as Ushnuviriya, that is hot in potency. So within your limitations and in moderate quantity, black coffee is actually really such a great detox. In fact, I would say that black coffee has been one of my secret weapon by which I can consume I can, you know, without any guilt, guilt, I can consume any food in any of the restaurants and consume any kind of fatty food or any kind of junk food, even if I want, because I have this habit of regularly drinking black coffee. And the reason is, and I add it without sugar, I consume it without sugar, because like I said last week, as well as in the beginning of this, uh, you know, um, session that bitter taste, pungent taste, as well as anything that is heating in nature, you know, is really good and because, and especially compared to other bitter substances, coffee is, listen, how much is moderate quantity for black coffee? One cup a week, one cup a day. One cup of a day is this one and you need to be sensitive based on your personal, you know, body prakriti also because uh, people might complain that having too much of coffee can, you know, make them feel jittery and stuff. But um my routine my coffee ritual you know because my mug is nearly somewhere around thing like 470 or like it's nearly like 499 ml but the amount of water which i pour into my mug to make black coffee is actually somewhere between 490 ml or 470 ish so that, that's amount of black coffee i consume whenever i take in a day and I think I can consume, I can tolerate this amount of black coffee without any untowards effect because by nature, I am a kapha pitta prakriti guy. Because there's, an, there's a you know, generous amount of kapha in me, I can tolerate, you know, up to some extent. And the one, like one wonderful thing which I find about black coffee compared to many other, I mean, coffee compared to other bitter substances is because bitter substances by nature, they have a tendency to be cold in potency. So bitter taste and cold potency have got tendency to provoke vata. And that's not really good for, you know, that's not really for detox. But bitter taste is good enough to cleanse my channels of circulation and boost the agni. But because it is not cold in potency and it is heating in nature, it maintains the you know, open up channels. But whereas things which are cold in potency, they have at times have a tendency to shrink your channels of you know circulation so in this way this is how personally i zero down into consuming sh you know sugar free black coffee as my personal detox drink you know i know many of the people drink you know black coffee because they start liking it as a beverage but you can say that this is how i personally repurposed a beverage which people consume for its medicinal benefits so Similarly, uh, you know, like if there's other ideas in your mind, you can please feel free to ask me so that I can, you know, uh, help you to how exactly you can repurpose your favorite drink into such a way that you can render it into a detox beverage. Uh, do you have to taste the bitterness or can you take in a form capsule? No, you can take it in the form of capsule, but consuming that bitterness will give an advantage, Miss Nalini. Because the thing is that because when you consume it in your taste, you know, as an autonomic response, there is, uh, you know, there are some enzymes which are released in the mouth itself. So which actually starts the process of digestion in your tongue itself, 
rather than waiting it all the way to your you know stomach where it the capsule has to be broken down and then it has to be acted upon but whereas you know you start it on the tongue itself you know because it has both its uh, local effect as well as you know uh, the systemic effect because this is uh, you know uh, the um, logic behind in the ancient times and you will know where they say when you use these medicinal tweaks for brushing your teeth they always ask you to consume something which is bitter or astringent in this i mean this was another you know uh, this was another ayurvedic rationale where i developed the con uh, the concept of drinking black coffee soon after brushing my teeth because i know that i couldn't procure bitter tweaks of bitter tasting herbs easily to brush my own teeth so that's the reason why i started using because locally it has a good cleansing effect in your you know mouth and it it uh, because the local action in the tongue and the you know mucus of the so mouth itself initiates good amount of uh, you know like you said um what are your thoughts about green coffee i think green coffee is good and i've tried it myself for a couple of times uh it does have got less stimulating or absolutely no stimulating effect because there are instances when i've consumed uh, green coffee and within half an hour or so i was able to sleep so i think you can use green coffee um you know to get the benefits of black coffee and etc so i think you can and uh, i do not know how to explain it ayurvedically but there are some you know modern uh, biochemistry or phytochemistry uh, experts who says that the like when you consume green coffee as it is there are few enzyme uh, you know acids which are metabolic boosters which don't get denaturated by the effect of of the heat thereby green coffee is somewhere between 17 to 19 times more efficient in uh, you know boosting our metabolism and that's the reason why many people tout to this for fat loss and etc as much as i have tried it for that unfortunately i haven't really seen any significant difference between green coffee and black coffee when it, i mean green coffee and roasted coffee when it comes to for the weight loss effect but the main difference is that one is a non stimulatory and another is stimulatory when it comes to the brain sugar free energy drinks contain vitamin b and other so called good substances questions are sugar free energy drinks good or bad mm, well mm, well i uh, it's very difficult to say that because you know it depends on uh, because when you see as an energy drink and when you see from an ayurvedic perspective it definitely has to be uh, you know with the sugar or it has to be sweet in tasting but the thing is like sometimes whenever whenever an industry tries to create a sugar free product or like energy drinks or these you know sugar substitute unfortunately the substitute which they add have in recent research seems to be more damaging or something than the sugar itself so i think my current conclusion will be that they are probably you know bad so yeah that's what my current understanding is but my thing my opinion are likely to be changed in uh, in the presence of any new information if i come across it so this one. and uh, another yeah another favorite uh, detox beverage which i tell people especially for those people who have got good agni or like they have got moderate amount of agni is consumption of ghee or uh, that is clarified butter somewhere between like somewhere like one tablespoon in one big mug of hot water uh because ghee is the only that fatty substance which on consumption has a boosting effect on metabolism unlike other fatty substances like uh, sesame oil or coconut oil or any form of vegetable oil it has got a negative effect on the metabolism it doesn't really boost the metabolism but it rather kind of slows down and uh, probably somewhere in between is actually olive oil which i've tried that olive oil when i consume it initially it doesn't have any boosting effect in my metabolism but somewhere after one and a half hours or two hours i've seen that it has got metabolism boosting effect right unlike ghee it has got metabolism boosting effect somewhere between 
20 to 30 minutes. This is my personal experience. So consumption of ghee along with hot water. So whenever I say this, you know, it has to be taken in the right amount to have its complete benefits, you know, because, because consumption of ghee, it, it, it lubricates the channels of circulation in the right amount, such a way that it can seamlessly push out any kinds of toxins out of our body and eliminate in the form of urine and stools. And basically this is like, uh, smaller, this is basically like a micro version of what people undergo snehana before, before panchakarma. Can you consume one tablespoon, tea, okay, one teaspoon of ghee, ghee even with higher cholesterol level? Yes, absolutely you can, but I would suggest to be on a safer side, you can, you know, you can um, uh, spice up the ghee by heating it using those herbs which are known to reduce uh, uh, this one um cholesterol that is you can uh, like basically you can warm the ghee with the few with a pinch or with a pinch of either black pepper or cumin seeds or turmeric or uh, cinnamon these things you know uh, they help and the surprising thing this nalini is like you know like i have heard of uh, the cases where people have undergone snehapana that is on a sequence basis people consume uh, ghee and after undergoing panchakarma and virechana there has been drastic reduction of cholesterol you know so you can say that consumption of ghee leads to cholesterol is basically kind of like a voodoo scientific myth which was you know uh, spread by those oil manufacturers who wanted to you know sell hydrogenated and enhanced and fortified oils in the food market, those are the people who started peddling this misinformation. But whereas in reality, ghee can be used for reducing cholesterol. And how about ghee in who, hot food along instead of hot water? It will be hard to all drink ghee. It could be very hard to drink hot water with ghee. Not necessarily because many people are, yeah, okay, it depends on your personal choice. But some of the people who have told this throughout the globe, uh have told me that it tastes um pleasant when you consume this water or something and they feel like after consuming that they are so much hooked to that pleasant or that comfort you get by drinking this concussion that they feel like they just can't get enough of it you know but anyway i mean you know uh probably it's an individual thing probably but uh but the thing is you know the reason why i say it has to be sustained in hot water is because when you consume hot water in ghee it is uh, suspended and it is very well distributed the fat go globules so when you're consuming in the stomach you know it leads to a really great and greater or superior forms of absorptions quite faster so that you're able to derive its benefit faster i mean this is scientifically this is what they you know this has already been proven but i've tried it myself all the difference between consuming a tablespoon of ghee and followed by a cup of hot water and this thing and it's a different thing when you take a mug of hot water and then and then dip one tablespoon of ghee in it and then you let it suspended and so that you know it becomes into a shiny liquid and then you slowly drink it you know by stirring it constantly so that it leads to easy absorption assimilation and you know it's pharmacologic effects in the body now all this being said you know there is this crucial concept of dose when it comes to consumption of ghee because if you consume insufficient then it's of no use you wouldn't get its maximum benefit but if you consume too much of ghee then it leads to untowards effect like including generation of ama so the question is how exactly would you determine as to what dose is appropriate for the particular season geography and your personal you know agni status so the technique is very simple let's say that you have consumed ghee in the appropriate quantity then you see that sequentially you feel like uh, this is based on my personal experience like within 20 minutes i feel like i get this urge to eliminate my bowels as well as to urinate then by two or three hours i feel i get a really great hunger by the end of two hours and then by afternoon or so, I feel like my skin is very well moisturized. And by next day morning, I feel like my eyes feel a little bit cooler and my hair is better. 
and by the day three and four i started experiencing that my mind seems to be very cool calm and stable in spite of having the same provocative stimuli from my environment with respect to work place study or whatever it is and but and also i start enhancing you know that there is a decreased cracking in my joints of the bones and i feel like my movements have become more smoother and etc and by the day four or five i feel like there's a total enhanced lightness in the body and this is like day five and by end of second week i feel like my faculties of the memory has been greatly enhanced so like these are the benefits you experience from ghee when you consume it in the right quantity initially i thought that i was hallucinating all these benefits and etc but then when i opened up the sanskrit ayurvedic text called the charaka samhita turns out these are exactly the benefits of sneha pana so basically i realized that basically this one tablespoon of hot water ghee turned out to be our own personal homemade you know micro or micro or nano sneha pana sort of thing but let's say that you have consumed insufficient amount of ghee so how exactly would you determine this and uh, the thing is like you know so when you scratch yourself and you see the like you know you've just created whitish lines even temporarily if that is created then it shows that your body has not got sufficient amount of ghee that is the reason why your skin is not adequately lubricated and the thing is during summer or during winter your body needs greater amount of ghee so that's the reason why you'll have to up your dose of you know consumption of ghee but during other seasons like autumn and rainy season and spring you know then you can like even lesser dose of ghee can be quite well sufficient so this is how you determine whether the ghee is less or it is adequate how do you know if i am whether agni or vayu okay you mean to say pitta vata and etc okay so i think uh, uh, i think it's better if you get a consultation you know personalized consultation uh, like i think we got a this one you know a uh, personal consultation uh, to determine your prakriti and uh, because you know i mean there are so many people who tout various kinds of questionnaires by which you know uh, uh, you know questionnaires by which they try to determine your prakriti and etc but the components which they try to miss in that is like they don't take into consideration the climate the you know uh geography and the particular place and season etc so these symptoms can be this one you know uh they can you know lead to something what we call as confounding bias so i think it's better you get a personalized consultation with the you know ivac doctor uh you you can call you know through your through the chat and you can get a personalized uh, you know assessment of what your prakriti is so get into main topic what i was talking so this is how you determine whether the you know ghee has been insufficient or it's been sufficient so the third thing is like how exactly do you know if you have consumed too much of ghee you know in the hot water so one thing which you feel like within half an hour or something is like you feel uh you feel like you know um you feel little bit amount of heaviness you start yawning increase and you feel there's a sudden you know loss of appetite and you feel a little bit drowsy you have a tendency to yawn more and uh, you feel a little bit laziness or you feel some kind of inertia so these are exactly you know and yeah and another thing is like you start experiencing nose block so this is how you realize that you have taken too much of ghee than what your agni can handle so this is uh, so based on this you determine whether you need to take one tablespoon or Two teaspoons or one and a half tablespoons. So based on these symptoms, you determine that which is the appropriate dose for ghee for your body body constitution in this particular junction of time. And this is how you know you utilize ghee in hot water as a concussion, which is both as a detox as well as you know to enhance your immunity. So doesn't matter. when during the day you consume ghee or when during the day you consume ghee with hot water mm, yeah because if consume it first thing in the morning it is very efficient because you know by that time because your previous night would have been comparatively well digested and now this is a tricky part you know let's say that you wake up in next day in the morning and then 
you are not so hungry then i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily you know uh advise ghee but i would rather go for a black coffee but let's say that your digestion is okay and you feel light and while you're brushing your teeth you feel like there wasn't any whitish discoloration in the tongue then that shows that there is no ama so it means that you've been well digested and your agni is good then in that condition i think if you consume it as the first thing in the morning that is when you get the maximum benefit of this particular practice but let's say that um, you know your agni is not so good when you get up next day morning because the previous night's dinner has not been well digested or you had light dinner or you did not have adequate sleep so which might have undermined your agni or multiple reasons you know uh, that is when you can probably think of consuming black coffee you know and then i have to say to confess recently i've seen like ever since the um you know ever since these uh, rainy season and other seasonal changes have happened and i've seen you know that i am i am experiencing various variations of agni i have you know uh, started using uh, black coffee and just to boost up and to have even more profound uh, vata balancing and agni boosting benefit i have added uh, cumin seeds you know just to spice it up and then you know enhance my detox as well as to have a vata balancing nature so this is how you know ideally because for detox it's you know ideally you take it the first thing in the morning so i hope that answers your question and uh, can i get a thoughts of an kefir it's a cold drink but said to have great benefits yeah uh, yeah kefir um, yeah i'm sorry i don't remember right now because i mean a couple of weeks ago i did read about its uh, you know its benefit and to see from an ayurvedic perspective um, i think it's some variant of uh, lassi or something which is kind of like heavy in nature so and there's one thing you know it's like drink to touch they might be cold in nature but in its ayurvedic pharmacological effect they can still be heating in nature you know because uh, buttermilk and yogurt you know many indians believe it is supposed to be cold in nature but when you see from a ayurvedic perspective it is heating in nature the same thing about here you know see some oil also you know yeah it is uh, yeah. no no, no I, mean, i know what kefir is and i had recently read about it like a couple of 3 weeks ago or something but i am just not able to you know remember it right now as for this moment you know how to you know determine so i'll marlene right yeah so i'm i'm going to reach out to you personally and then i you know uh, i will answer your question i'll, I'll just do a amount of my uh, you know um uh, my personal research again and then i'll get back to you later you know i'll reach out to you personally and then answer your question uh, so, so yeah this is you know like because there are quite many substances you know when you touch and when you consume it you know they are supposed to be cold in nature but when you see from its vidya and its body effect point of view you know it is heating in nature you know so is also ice cream you know because uh, once upon a time i had heard of this thing called the ice cream diet and initially i thought it was something kind of like a fad diet or something but once i experimented it on myself then i realized that you know as much as it is heavy in nature and it is viscous or it is like this thing in nature ice cream is an ushna vidya thing meaning that it is a hot in potency you know on long run you know so it does have a you know agni stimulating or at uh, you know metabolism uh, stimulating this and you know so sometimes you know the temperature by which you touch can be different than what it might have on the effect you know the one because the same thing is said about sesame oil also ayurvedically you know they say that sesame oil to touch is actually really cold in temperature but externally but when you consume it you know it is heating in nature that's the reason why for external application you know they always heat up the sesame oil you know before undergoing panchakarma and etc but uh, that is not necessary or it's not necessary needed you know to to heat up when you consuming internally unless and until just to make it palatable so <laughs> ginger ice cream yeah, i i've not had the you know uh, the pleasure of trying that so yeah i go with the chocolate because chocolate again in its uh, basic uh, you know yeah uh, chocolate is another you know unsweetened sweetened chocolate in the absence of cream is another drink which i've used as a my own personal detox beverage also you know sometimes i've tried that you know next like previous night just to induce a tranquilizing effect i've just used hot water and hershey's cocoa powder and then next day morning i get up i'm just like 
I'm so hungry, I can just, you know, devour anything. That's how I'm feeling. But that is because it is bitter in taste. So, you know, um, so yeah, taking that in perspective, I've seen, you know, chocolate ice cream sometimes can have a greater, you know, metabolism boosting effect than other uh, flavored like pineapple or strawberry. So, assuming that it's, you know, it's natural flavor and not, you know, artificial flavor. So, so is there any, is there any other, you know, um beverage of yours which you are you know which is which you are personally inclined to and you'd like to ask you know if that can be repurposed to make it to you know repurposed into a detox drink you know of your personal choice And yeah, and one more thing about the lemon water thing, which have also has been, you know, uh, proven and documented through modern research is, you know, that uh, lemon water, when you take it more than necessary, it has a tendency to push out the electrolytes, especially calcium and few things in the body. So, uh, you know, uh, imbalanced electrolyte in the body have been associated with overzealous consumption of lemon water. So, you know, uh, this is another reason why you have to be careful with lemon water. Uh, yeah, green tea is good for detox, you know. And my personal favorite is uh, sencha compared to matcha because in my personal experience as well as, you know, and according to research, matcha, when you take it too much, it has a tendency to have anxiety provoking effect unlike sencha, which is uh, seem to have a very, you know, tranquilizing effect. So I have heard and seen, you know, uh, views of few psychiatrists and few people who have used sencha green tea as a supplement as a supplement in treating anxiety disorders okay i have an uh, beverage that uh, what are the properties we need to pay attention while buying ghee to consume with hot water in the morning if you cannot make it at home uh yeah unfortunately i have never uh, you know uh come across that because uh i actually i personally actually run through trial and error you know because i have the pleasure of i pleasure i had the pleasure or the privilege of remembering how an authentic butter tasted like so i used to take the try these various brands with their minimal you know uh you know like with their minimal dosage and try it myself and try to compare the taste and the aroma with how it and try to compare it with my memory of good one. If it matches, then I try to consume it and then try to be mindful of my own phenomena in the body and try to see, you know, try to be sensitive to see if I am experiencing all the touted benefits of, you know, ghee. If not, what I do is that I don't consume that ghee internally for detox or rather use it as a skin cream, you know, or use it wherever, you know, the skins might be cracked or use it as a skin moisturizer. That's how I do. I know it's kind of like an expensive way to do about it, but I think, and this is what I do, you know. So, uh, is it? Yeah, okay. Um, in grammar, what's up? What's up about honey? Take with lime in morning below forty degrees. I think. Yeah. Um, I think maybe it's all right. To take it within forty degrees, but. Uh, when you see from an Arabic perspective, lemon and honey, again, you know, it's not exactly which which can be which we would recommend for as a you know one fist uh, one size fit all theory because like I said in the beginning, you know, lime or lemon isn't exactly what we would recommend people as an you know excellent detox. So, if you are a kafa person. Or if you are a water person, I think then lemon might be okay. But the thing is, the sour substance in lemon has a tendency to increase uh, vata and pitta. Basically, that's the thing with all the sour tasting substances. According to Ayurveda, they have a tendency to provoke your both vata and kapha. I'm sorry, uh, pitta and kapha. 
so as much as it is beneficial to uh pacify your vata it does have a you know tendency to provoke pitta and kapha so unless uh, so i'm not sure you know, so based on your constitution as well as based on if there is any you know subclinical forms of vikruti also based on that we will have to see you know whether lime and honey has to be consumed and uh, so pitta kapha then i think it would be then i think i would really you know be cautious in consuming that honey is all right because honey is told to be an excellent vata kapha i mean pitta kapha pacifier ayurvedically speaking so honey with water is fine but because it is heavy in nature or guru in nature i am not sure if I, i would recommend that for detox you know i would rather i think it's safer to for to you know boil the water with any of the indian spices or herbs which are hitting in nature and which are either pungent or that is spicy or which is bitter in taste so and maybe up to some extent astringent also it's okay you know i think these things will be you know uh these can be used as a detox you know but in astringent thing you will have to be careful because over zealous consumption of astringent thing might provoke vata and pa vata leads to impairment of agni so that's again have to be careful you know so among these various things you know the common beverage which we consume and which can be easily repurposed for detox from my perspective was actually black coffee and it suits my prakriti well because i have a kapha element in my prakriti so again you know let's say that if you are a vata pitta person then i would be careful about uh, coffee so i think in in that circumstances i think ghee with hot water would be more efficient or you can consume uh, uh cardamom or uh, this one uh cumin because cardamom is one of those substances which has a tendency to balance all the three doshas so cardamom water cardamom boiled water would be a safer bet so this is how it is so yeah so i think we'll uh, wrap up now um what are your thoughts about all these cow milk alternatives that are plant based where they add things like pea proteins okay um mm, yeah i think it's all right but the thing is like like i said uh, last week you know these alternative for milk we will have to you know see whether if they like if you see from an ayurvedic perspective we need to you know see if uh, these particular supplements from their guna karma that is their properties and action perspective if they are similar from an ayurvedic perspective and from a modern perspective you will have to see uh whether if they have the same kind of substitute for this one but i think it's going to be really hard this one because i've seen like the role of casein protein so far i have not heard any plant origin protein which is, which is able to you know have the same effect of casein protein or at least as per as my limited reading of research article so far so i think from a modern perspective it is going to be really difficult for me to you know um you know uh say if there is going to be any uh, absolute equivalent but ayurvedically speaking if it is from ayurvedic pharmacological perspective i think you can you know if not as a single alternative but at least by trying to combining them i think maybe you can do that you know? but you know like ayurvedically speaking the best alternative for cow milk is actually goat milk you know assuming they have been reared without uh, hormones and antibiotics and all sorts of you know chemicals been pushed or pumped into them i think goat's milk is the next best thing which ayurveda says you know in absence of uh, cow's milk so. okay so so yeah i would like to you know wrap up things now so next saturday we'll be talking about those behavioral activities and physical activities you know which we can you know uh, indulge in so basically in an absence of you know uh, change uh, in absence of choosing what to eat and what to you know uh, drink what physical act- 
activities can be indulged in which will have great detoxifying effect you know because uh, sometimes due to multiple constraints like lack of ability lack of availability of the things which we want or uh, you know lack of uh, you know or because or because of financial constraints sometimes in you know, as much as we know what is the right thing to consume or what like right thing to drink or sometimes you know succumbing uh, to our own guilty pleasures and etc sometimes we might not be able to you know indulge in conscious um rightful beverages and food leads to detoxification so in those uh, you know uh, circumstances what exactly the behavioral you know interventions like uh, exposing to sunlight or walking or what forms of exercises or what activities when indulged in will lead to detox so i'll be talking about this in the next saturday so you know hope to you know uh hope to see you next week and uh, have a good weekend the chat box will be still be on for one or two more minutes and uh, yeah dr belaku yes so uh, usually you know these things are usually recorded and they usually have a you know they record these things and you know they send it to the people you know because you know by the end of like the fourth saturday usually there's be a questioning thing you know where people will be asked various questions on the various talks i've given past three saturdays and the people you know who answer that the first two people to give the correct answer you know their names will be you know noted ute and uh, you know and then the the lucky person will be brought, brought from the lot and they will be offered you know for two adults and two children uh, two days of uh, you know uh, treatment package in ivac which can be redeemed over the next two years so for this purpose you know recordings are usually given you know so that people can you know i think the personal consultation link can be found in uh, the, the website you can go to the chat where there's always a chat and then you can you can reach out to them and you know the chat bot will you know connect you with the consultant you know so i mean there will be always someone else in the other end of the you know chat um services so you know they'll reach uh, you just ask the question and they'll reach out to you mr rama so see you next saturday have a nice weekend